Hi, in this session we're going to be looking at time series analysis. Now before, when we've been considering the sale of a particular product during the year, or our level of activity versus total cost, we assumed that sales would occur evenly throughout the course of the year. However, in reality, this is often not the case. So for many products, there will be higher sales during a certain part of the year. So for example, if you're looking at selling ice creams during the summer, you'd expect sales to be very, very high. Whereas during the winter, sales are going to be very low. Most products have some kind of seasonality in relation to their sales. So this is what we want to consider with time series analysis. If we know that there is some seasonality in relation to our sales, can we use that information to predict or forecast what our sales figures will be, perhaps in June or August of next year? When we are looking at time series on a graph, on our x-axis, we have time. And on our y-axis, we're looking at sales activity. So let's consider the example of a company that manufactures and sells toys. If we start then in January, I would expect in January the sales of toys will be reasonably low. It's just after Christmas, children have already gotten a lot of presents, parents aren't inclined perhaps to buy them more toys. So we'll start low in January. As we get into springtime, perhaps the days get longer, parents become happier, they're more likely to buy presents for their children, and sales will go up. Then during the summertime, children are taken on summer holidays. That's their present for the summer, so no more toys, and sales will go down again. Then during the winter, we get back into Christmas time, and sales will spike up again before they go back down in January of the following year. So this is our seasonality for a toy manufacturing company. We know that perhaps during the spring and the winter, coming up to Christmas, sales will be high. Whereas during the summer and in the early months of the year, January through March, sales will be quite low. So if we have this information, how can we use it to forecast what our sales will be perhaps next year? If we take this to be January 2010 and this to be January 2011. And we want to forecast what will our sales be perhaps in January 2012 or March 2012 and so on. Well, what we would want to do then is try and establish if we were to continue on this line, where would it go to next? So we want to extrapolate our time series line outwards into the future. If we are going to do that, then there's a number of components we need to consider. When we're looking at time series analysis, there are four different components. The first component is the trend. What we are looking at here is the overall trend up or down. So if we have a look at our time series, far neater than the one I've drawn. If we're thinking about the trend then, we are just looking at establishing some sort of trend line. In this case, we can see that the overall trend is for our sales activity to increase over time. Now, we want to establish exactly what sort of increase would we expect to see each month or each quarter. The second component of our time series is the seasonal variation. The seasonal variation is just the peaks and troughs throughout the year. 
So the seasonal variation is where we go above or below our trend line. So perhaps then, if this is our toy manufacturing company, this is the springtime, this is the summertime. So we know that during the springtime, sales of our toys are above the trend line. That is the seasonal variation for spring. Whereas in summertime, we expect sales to be below the trend line. Now we want to calculate during each season exactly how much will our sales be above or below our trend line. The third component of time series is the cyclical variation. These are the medium term variations due to business cycles. So, for example, economic cycles, like sometimes the economy is in recession, sometimes the economy is doing well. That would be a medium or more long-term variation in our sales. We would expect during a recession for our overall sales to be lower than when, the economic, when there is economic growth. So, we have our third component, cyclical variation. The final component is the residual or random variation. These are changes in our sales due to unforeseen changes. So we cannot predict the random or residual variation. So this might be, for example, a change in the government and our change in the regulation affecting our ability to sell our product. Now, for F2 purposes, by definition, we can't calculate the residual variation, so you just need to understand what this is. In addition, you wouldn't be asked to calculate the cyclical variation, so when we're looking at our calculations, we are going to be focusing on the first two components. So we want to be able to calculate the trend line for our time series. In addition, we are, in addition, we are going to have to understand what our seasonal variation is.